minus 20 seconds. Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. I'm joined by Mike, who looks like a baby who got his wish to be big, and I'm joined by Carl, who looks like someone put some googly eyes on a knee. Yes. Welcome. So, <laughs> so today, world premieres, people, world premieres. There are two of these machines that currently exist in the world. There is this one, and it is the one the engineers are currently using. So, I'm incredibly excited to uh to unbox this machine because we've never we've never had like a world exclusive before this is a kickstarter so let's just be very clear before we do anything <coughs> kickstarters are kickstarters if you invest in a kickstarter be prepared that that kickstarter may not deliver i do not think that is going to be the case with this i cannot tell the future at your own risk so this is also the first time that we have had a printer that has turned up in a box. This was delivered by FedEx, and the word up is slightly too long for a FedEx driver to be able to uh, to be able to deliver. So, um, so he did deliver this completely upside down. Which one second? There's Ray. Hello, Ray. Good morning. So this is our Good first evening. crate. <laughs> oh. Evening. Sorry, Carl. Right. That's it. It's not morning. <sighs> I am. Martin likes I'm ninety percent sure this is how this comes out, but we'll see. Hello, idiots. Oh, that's nice. Right. And then we need to. This is just. Oh, in the box is a cardboard box. Flight. It's like a flight case. It's just a box in a box. Did you take and one I bet you, yeah, I'd be amused if that box in there was upside down for the box to be on the outside. If the box inside's upside down, that is yeah. going to be really funny, yeah. I'm not going to lie, getting this... Uh... You haven't undone the two tabs, have you? Oh, he has now. There's two tabs at the bottom, but they're bent over. So I'm just going to do this. All right. It does make it look like I'm about to do a magic trick, but I suspect I'm not. All right, I'm going to take these ones off and all. Oh, I didn't want this falling out, did I? Never had one in a crate before. I, I guess because it was airshipped, wasn't it? To you. Saves getting I think damaged. the Mega 8K came in a crate. I can't remember. Kuma Mod says he will be in a little bit. Yeah, no worries. We're going to have lots of questions to answer on this job. So, oh God. Come on. Okay. Have you got the lights? Oh, I want to get out of the box. It's like nothing down the oh, truck. Oh, she's you a flying device. Oh, don't do that. Come on, James. There's literally only one of these that exists on in the, the world. Back, I Break see it. Clips. James, James. on yeah. the back, I see clips on the front. Have you, got, have you got the lights turned on in there? Me? Yeah, why? Seems dark. Does it? Hmm. I'm going to turn the main lights on. Is that better? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Right. All right, let's try these. All clips. the clips. All of the clips. Oh, God. I hope they don't ship this to everybody else. It'll take you guys six months just to open it. I feel it's got to be like I'm making this harder than it. Than it needs to be. Well, you are using is, a is, is that all, all the time the shipping of that equipment? <sighs> or is that only you, you get? I reckon uh, they've no, seen I, your I, videos I, before. I hope they're not all going out like this. I'd be surprised if they were. 
I um, reckon they've seen your videos before and seen how. And they were, and they were like, "We need to make sure yeah, that these guys it... can't break this." As well, Matt... you should have seen how long it took him to unpack that computer. Yeah, yeah, that was a while. And Matt German called us idiots. So did he? Yeah. Sorry, was an accident on my autocorrect. Oh, was it? How convenient. Right. Oh, come on. Oh, I really I've just got I've just got this horrible vision of it just leaving the desk. <laughs> right. Yeah, the isn't really unboxing. Oh, and here it comes. Yeah. So it's giving birth. Yes, and a cow. Yeah. Look at the magic box. Why is this so hard? This shouldn't be the hardest bit. So, there we go. Right. Yeah. Oh. oh well, that's that's going to be a logistical issue at some point. <laughs> right. The first box is open. Now we get to the second box. <laughs> Wait a minute, part two. Yeah, we end the live stream there. That's part one. <laughs> click, click. We're really, gonna, we're really teasing this one out. <laughs> is it? Does it? Is it heavy? Because obviously, like the M3 is quite Ooh. heavy. The M3 uh, Max. Uh, yeah, I reckon that's a good. Reckon that's a good twenty-five kilos. I don't know. Apparently, Nonstick wants the wooden box. He wants the box. Yeah, I don't oh, know if it's just, to put his cat keys in. in it. And the cat's just like, and the cat, you you buy the cat a toy, and it just wants the thing. No, he's got like a, a box in here. He's going to make a beehive. Guy. Yeah, he wants it for the his bees. Box. Again, <laughs> <laughs> like if I open this up and there's gonna be a box in here, I'm gonna get really, <laughs> I'm gonna get real snotty. <laughs> right. Okay. Nice the cat, yes. First, we have power supply. We have the little box, which comes with the world's tiniest gloves. A knob. Hold on. There we go. Comes with a American power cord. Not comes needed. with a tiny funnel. Or oh my God. for a stoat. Difficult to tell. Um, it comes with <laughs> an engraved, hold on, an in, a, a branded and engraved scraper. With you engraved pick the big leagues, things. guys. <laughs> Couldn't grow. I'll be no fair, like, everything is actually branded. Like, even the little USB key is. Get your little USB key. You get your standard box of stuff. So these will be the VAT screws. You get your little tube of lip gloss or, gl or grease. You get a sanding disc. So Ooh. that's interesting. Bill uh, you yes. get Is one. It's for your build plate. Is this Is for your one? build plate? Yeah, it's for the build plate, yeah. Or it's got a built-in sander. And that then, if at any point... You do need to operate this within two meters of another person. There's also a face mask. There's also some strips of paper that I don't know what they're for, but we'll figure that out. Maybe leveling paper? Yeah, I think so. Seems odd that they would give you scrap. It seems odd they would give you that, but you meant weight wise. Okay, right. So then. Oh. Oh, no. It's got Come no on. gold on it, Martin. So it, it it's not a good scraper for James. He likes the gold ones. Yeah, but he's destroyed that with resin, that nice one. Yeah, I bet he has. Look at this. He's, look at, he's doing some weight training. Hmm. Okay. Well, I like he's out of the box the within the box. And it is... Oh, sticky. Right. Why is this so hard? Oh. 
right. And there we have one printer. So, side note, pull this up. Interesting connection on the power supply. <coughs> you're not you're not picking that up from the local uh, from your local B and Q light. Like. That is uh, that's a chunky boy. All right, go back to this. Go back to that. It's got a hinge as well. That's good. So there's paper. There's still some of the lining paper on this, but only bits. <laughs> seems a bit. Seems a bit odd. All right. It's got a little girdle around it. Hold on. That comes round. That comes round. I tell you what, it's got real Nova 3D vibes about it. Yeah, the colour. That sort of that white and that white and uh, an orange. Although actually, now I think about it, I'm pretty sure the Nova 3D is actually yellow, but still. What an intensely unsatisfying peel. That's why I experienced cars the other day. <laughs> yeah, last week. Oh god, <laughs> tedious. Forty-five yeah. minutes of my life. Yeah, the, yeah. The lid with it the hinges is so much better. It. it oh. Right, there we go. So, three D mechanics is asking us if it's uh, a new chocolate printer, James. <laughs> It is not. Oh, it's still got paper on the inside as well. It's still got paper on the probably, inside as well. Yeah, would, just when you this think. This would probably print chocolate better than the one we actually had. Yeah. It probably would, yeah. So, the one, one thing I will say is I do like, I like the hood, but the hood isn't on, it's not on like a, it's not on like a gasket hinge or anything. Yeah. So it is either open all the way back or it's closed all the way forwards. So, um, so like, How you're not going to be it... able to... Oh, that's means you when can't open it on a two-wire, two-wire, yeah. you know, shelf. Well, it means it. you either have to open it all the way, or you have to... Um, you it either have to open it all the way, or it's closed or hold well. it, basically. You couldn't put that flat against the wall, though, could you now? With that lid. No, I mean, to be fair... If you plugged in the, um, if I plugged in the power supply, which also like has like a screw in to stop it from falling out, which I, do, I mean that is a solid connection. But so if I show you around here, you can see, you can see on this right. This is where the power cord goes. This is where the ferrite block comes out to, and that is almost directly in line yeah. with the back of this machine. So. You, would, you wouldn't be able to have it flush to the wall. And to be honest with you, I don't think you'd want to because then you'd but block, all the, part, or you'd block yeah. all the cooling fan yeah. and everything else. So it is, there's method in the madness. I just maybe would have liked to have seen, I'd like to have seen that perhaps on a gasket hinge or something, like, how, like, like a gas ram or something. But bear in mind, guys, that this is ultimately still an engineering machine right this is not this is they, they haven't launched their campaign yet they plan on doing that um sometime in august they haven't got a confirmed date as to when it goes live yet um and one of the reasons why we're so excited about this is for just the machine not the uh, push rods would be a good idea yeah they would be so um so for the for just the machine, how does this come out? Oh, okay. That I like that. That's quite a clever bit of packaging, right? So sorry. So for just the machine, four uh, four five nine, four hundred and four hundred and fifty nine US dollars for an eight K ten point one inch machine without the auto refill. Without the, um, there is a, a carbon filter that goes on it without those things. So it's just a base machine. But that is an oh, aggressive price. Yeah, your filament. That, that's your half price. Bottle. 
on most competitors at this size mm. without absolutely it's a, it's a very very aggressive price as i say so and a decent size to start with they've not gone small yeah yeah so that's the auto refill vat that looks like Perhaps a little hole, and that is just did a little uh, thing for it. If you uh... well, I thought initially that this actually went in here, but I don't know that it does. So we'll figure that out in a minute. I'll open up the uh, other peel. Is this going to be more satisfying? Oops. Pretty satisfying. <laughs> did the glass lift up then? Yeah, it did, I think. Did I what? The glass yeah, lift go, 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 yeah, the glass did lift a bit, but once the vat's on it, it seems to be okay. That's right. right uh... Fep, with a bit of a smoke to it. So that, that's what Annie Cubic have done, haven't they, with the M3 Plus James, and Max? is that not on a removable cleaning screen? What you think it's a no, um on, on the L C D. Yeah, yeah, that was a removable cleaning screen. It was a, yeah, it, was, it wasn't a screen protector. And was it goes so big in the height up the screen right is loose where you're now touching. That is loose. Yeah. But you can't but it's only because something was stuck to it that you could pull it out. And once the so there's actually a, there's a rim around this. Yeah, but that is uh, not normal. I don't, then know, you've I don't got know if you can see. So, like, so round here, there's um, there's a rim, and once this vat's in, which it locks in like like that, there's no way that yeah. screen can move now. So it's a slightly nice. different design, isn't it? To most, really. Yeah. Is it designed to put that what the it clean is out to clean it? Yeah, but I, I don't think it's to take out to clean it. I think it's to take out to change it. Yeah. I think they're going for like a taller screen change thing. So yeah. like if you put a suction cup on that, you'd be able to lift that out without having to do any tools. Yeah, my dad was the really screen. Good. Because the reality is, right, is that the screens on these machines are consumable parts, right? Yeah, but then have you a problem when the screen is broke and it's come resident in it. Uh yeah, I mean, but if you had no, this, is, maybe, this is this is an engineering machine. See, yeah. I don't think it's only the think, second one that exists. Yeah, so the, the way the vat sits on top of it is going to be enough pressure to stop it moving. And if it does yeah. leak, it's going to leak whether you've got tape on it or not. At the end of the so day, I have yeah. quite an I elegant will. little solution to that. So this let's bring this back here. And let's see if we can. No, nope. go in. Here we go. Good. Right. So this here is the auto refill. So when you're not using it, there's a little magnet that holds it there. And then in the back of this vat, there's this, there's this little section. When the vat is in, then this just scoop, slides in. And then this here has got, you can manually pump in, turn it off or automatically or automatically feed so you can set the pump to what you want to do you can you can top it up if you want it to yeah. or you can uh, or you can do the other way so and how big can the the bottle in well One i liter? would probably say that's a 250 so obviously you fill the vat i would say the vat could probably take a litre and then, uh, and then if the screen isn't sealed, you're going to get a lot of light bleed. No, the screen, no. So to be clear, again, the screen is sealed. It sits inside of this rim, right? So it sits inside of this rim here. All that happened was when I peeled this off, the back it of that it. screen lifted slightly. So it might just be a little bit of the adhesive failed. I don't know. But... Seems to be all right. We'll leave the vat off for a second so that we can do the uh, so we can do a light test. There's also a thingy thing, and I don't know what the thingy thing does. So I'm going to plug it in and find out. Are they little displays? <laughs> so we plug this in. 
it's a hefty power supply, like. How many watts is it? Two ninety. Power supply on. Okay, where's the on button then? Oh, it's right at the back. Oh, oh it's, yeah, it's temperature. Temperature. Timer. Temperature. Is it a heater? I think the so. Temperature yes, of, of, the, of the screen and a temperature of this your This is bottle. set, though. Does that mean that it's heated? I reckon it's got a heated enclosure, that. So... There we go. So this this here, you can set between um, between Celsius and Fahrenheit. But like, okay. The one is for the bottle, I think, and the other is for from, from the fat. Yeah, that would make sense. This has got to be for the vat, right? Because yeah. there's a sensor that goes on the back of the vat, right? So there's yeah. got to be one for the vat and one for the building closure. So this is yeah. the enclosure one, and this one's the vat one. All right, fair yeah. enough. We have unfortunately come up against our first slight challenge, which is that this menu is currently in Chinese. I think English also. <laughs> I hope. Never mind, I just changed it. Amazing. Two buttons. Yay. Oh, Matthew's here. Hold on. Matthew, hello, sir. Hello. So there we go. So we've got. So you're gonna you're gonna want to go into settings. Oh, you already got it out of Chinese. Never mind. Yeah. So literally, you press system and you click language, and it just it just switches between the two. Yep. So that's pretty good. So there's a calibration thing in there. I probably won't go into that because there's no USB in there at the moment. There's a clear or oh, panel test. Let's do a panel test. Go. Panel works. And then, so we take out our knob. The real Sam Prentice. Good lord. Back. Hello, back. idiot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, how's man? your diabetes oh man i'm good i'm firing up <laughs> don't worry about me i was thinking about you today actually because i was on the daily mail earlier and um there was a baby turtle that had eaten quite a lot of plastic I thought, james probably would not care about this news article no not a little bit <laughs> I, I don't i hope he, i hope he does <laughs> I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna keep moving further and further right hand to the screen. So I think I'm gonna have to uh, I think I'm gonna have to take down the uh... I'm almost sitting on the set eight. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right, so build plate. Like a little cross hatchy build plate? Yep. But different to the diamond effect that's on the um... oh that's not in focus, hold on. Focus. So different to the one that's on like the any cubic and things, but it doesn't really feel textured if I'm honest. But maybe that's just enough. Oh. So I'm struggling to understand how you put this in. So this is a little carbon filter. So what this says is, is you use this for um, a day and then um, and then you leave it out in the sun for three to four hours. It cleans it out because it's a natural mineral crystal air purifier. Um, Interesting. So it's on, it's on a magnet, isn't it? So there must be. Well, one would imagine so, but you can't just leave it like you can't just like. Oh, right. then. You can't just leave it there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That just seems like it just seems like there should be a place for it. I don't know where it is. When I saw I it, before, say it's it on top. Yes. bottle. Yes. So. Oh, hello. Okay. Take that out for a second. But there's no way to like. Let's move this off. 
Okay, it literally just goes like that. Yeah, I thought it was right underneath there. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, well, that answers that question at least. Okay, That's what she said. You had me. I need to take my <laughs> number out. That, that, was, that was another, another classic look. of yours, James. When I was watching you earlier, James, I noticed that you kind of came across like somebody that maybe would be also on QVC. And uh, what was what was the price point again for the printer? What's the? Sorry, I don't know what that noise was. What, what did you say? Yeah, what's the price point for the printer? Can you do that for me again, please? So, the price point for this machine: four five nine US dollars. The best on the market. I needed to sound a little bit more sleazy than that, didn't I? Apologies. Yeah, we've got thirty left uh, in stock, and if you call now, you might be entitled to a. And if you call now, machine. you'll regret it. Your children will regret it. <laughs> Breathe in the sulfur, baby. Breathe in the sulfur. There we go. Right. So, home. I'm at this bar. Well, it sounded like he was wrestling a ferret in there. <laughs> Me? No, Matt. So I think this comes. Factory levels. So let's so you move think this up. Well, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Or more specifically, that's what I'm going to use. That's what I'm going to do. The build plate is adjustable on the sides, but I mean, this looks, it seems level. Oh, okay. Matt, I don't know what you're yeah, using. Nick will have not from day today. There we go. So, so we have got a uh, we have got a ball screw on the back. Hold on, the back here. There we go. It's a little better. Right out. There we go. So we have got a ball screw on the back. Dual lead screw. Uh, dual linear rails. We've got this for the temperature temperature of the enclosure. There's also a little temperature probe that goes onto the um, that goes onto the vat refill thing. So you get. The temperature of your vat readout, so you know what you. I don't. I mean, the insinuation on this is that there's a heater. I I, I did not yes. know there was a heater on it. Yep, that's exactly what that is. It looks like it might actually be dual heater, so it might be yeah. a ambient heater and a vat heater. It doesn't. Just so I mean, just so we're clear, there isn't a. Oh, that's just screen calibration. All right. Oh, cool. Network. So apparently you can do Wi Fi. Okay. That's just the firmware version. They've got a telephone number to call support. Who's fine? On a, on a telephone call right to go, oh, yeah, you definitely broke this. Check Dude, off the number is working. <laughs> Ring it yeah, right now. Yeah. Conversation Let going ring. on with one of the hosts. No, is that? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. That's me. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Right, fair enough. I got, I got the little ones right, right behind me. Right. Just, okay. So that goes into there. That screws, which oh no. <laughs> oh no. There we go. That's fine. Break? I knew where they were. That. So, Sam, have you done your um, have you done your three point one upgrade now? Uh, I'm right call. in the middle of it, actually. I've got um, I basically put the cassettes on the back and started putting all the cabling through, and then uh, the belting the belts through. And then what I found is that um, I need to also run them through the um, x axis. Now the problem with that, of course, is that it's fiddly, isn't it? It's really bloody fiddly if you if you're not there at that point in time. So I'm nearly I'll there. I'll be honest, it. trying to trying to get those through the exit, and then that nearly broke me as an adult. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> it, it is you know, what I was hoping for. You know, maybe in like a revision, maybe you could get them almost like a cassette. You know, so like you just wire it, and then you then you then in place it on. That's what I'm kind of yeah. hoping for. But yeah, it's a bit it's a bit of a faff. But I'd forgotten how annoying it was but i reprinted loads of those parts in abs and various other things now so i'm hoping to come back with something um quite good but to be honest i spoke to uh, michael laws at teaching tech 
because his name was mentioned about getting this kit and i was like okay cool and when i spoke to him he said he's not going to bother with with the upgrade because his one works just fine he hasn't got any issues with it so yeah and it's one of those things isn't it if it's not giving you a feature that you need yeah. then there's no point so, so what's the upgrade for then is it just more stability yeah it's, it's to do a lot to do with the um uh any kind of z wobble but to be honest, I didn't really have a major issue either. The reason that I've done it, though, is one, because they've sent it to me, which is jolly nice of them, of course, I'm but also because uh, Big Tree Tech, um, LDO, and a bunch of other people, uh, Slice Engineering and stuff, they've sent me stuff to go on this machine. And right. I thought, well, I might as well just do a whole overhaul. So the Bond Tech stuff's come off. You know, I've changed a bunch of stuff out. So the idea is to, to basically come up with the fresh machine, essentially, with different boards and different bits and pieces on it. So. But well, we'll say if you're using the um, Pavel's Ava 3 system, that is awesome and uh, a massive upgrade from, from Ava 2 to Ava 3 because everything's kind of modular. So you can literally just pick everything out. It's it's really, really intricate. So definitely worth it. Yeah, definitely worth it. We actually have a game. There we go. So, then Matt, you should print those kids a gag. Pay <laughs> <laughs> them some measure. Well, the, the thing is, they are they are literally right on the other side of me. So. <laughs> so, I think the only thing that I would like to have seen is they must be able to design a tool that makes feeding those belts through the sides easier. Yeah, I, th I think like, all you would literally need would be there. like would be like a scooped guide. That you that you put in and then <laughs> you can yeah, push upstairs. the belt through and it pushes it down. off the TV and go upstairs. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I mean, like, like I say, those cass I, those cassettes for me would be like it makes logical sense just to go right, right. put the bells through, yep, and then click on them, rather than trying to mess around on top of the machine oh, and stuff. It? But you've got to remember though, when I first got the original oh, recall, can you pause the game and go upstairs? Are you talking to me? <laughs> this isn't a game, Matt. This is reality. <laughs> you guys can't. No hear proof me. of that. Oh, we can hear you. Oh, we can, yeah, hear, we can you. hear you, Matt. Harrington <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 101. Amazing. 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 Right. Okay. Yeah, so so what, I'm going for it with resin. So Sorry, carry on. Jamie, yep. When the original V Core came out, there was no. There was no software. There was no. You know, you could put Clipper on it, but it was there were two camps. There was the Marlin camp, and then there was the Clipper camp. And there was yep. no support. There was nothing. So you just kind of wandered around and hoped that somebody knew a little bit more than you did. So, you know, back back at though, you know, we're only talking like two years ago, right? But back then, it was kind of like you have to do your own firmware. There was no oh. RAT OS. So in comparison to where, it was, to where it is today, it's a completely different machine, completely different experience. So and 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 I get and I, and I get your point. I mean, the, the reality of, of so obviously I, I previously built the Voron. Mm -hmm. The two point four for a start, people think that two point four means that it's it's the second Voron that was made, which it wasn't. It's actually one of the oldest, and the documentation is the oldest as well. The problem that you have with the Voron that I don't think Rat Rig suffers from quite as much is that if I put a spider board in the Voron, that's a Voron. If I put an octopus board in, that's a Voron. If I use Clipper, if I use Mainsail, if I use if I use Fluid, if I decide that I want to put a Duet board in there, if I don't want a Dragon Hot End and I want to have a Mosquito or I want to put a Pellet Extruder on it, all of those are Vorons. So yep. bearing in mind that all the different kits are all different, it's really difficult to actually find a the help that you need with the specific thing that you have. Because the answer back invariably is a bit like sort of many moons ago when you'd go onto a Facebook group and people would be like, can you share your support settings? And people would be like, why would I do that? That, that, that won't help you because your machine support settings will definitely be different to mine. Absolutely. But, it, you know, and it's, it's, it's all the time. And it's, yeah, it, I, I get what you mean. It's, it's, it's difficult. But with, I think the V core, because it's much more static, yeah. it's much more this is the kit you get getting support for that hardware is yeah i mean the, the other good thing is generally has the same stuff when I, when I was out in when i was out in mirth you know there's um they've got us suppliers now so the people that are having trouble or they were they were moaning I, I, I had a lot of kind of feedback from people going oh we can't get it in america oh and, and that's the whole point though is that you can build this 
if you can get the extrusion in any country, you can essentially build what they're what they're supplying. And actually, yeah. the three point one, it actually makes some of the parts a lot easier. There isn't some. There's no bespoke parts in it anyway, but it might be a little bit more difficult to get in, in several parts of America, perhaps. But, um, you know, like I say, it's just washers and stuff. You know, it's not it's not anything that's sort of too extravagant. Um, yeah. You're right. You know, MK. That's their fault for living there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I thought. You know, we're actually we're winning for change go, over in the UK. over there having their own lives. Disgusting. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, like I say, that I, I was surprised when they came out with the small rat rig because... That's kind of, you know, the, the first time I'd seen a, a Voron in person was at Murph. I hadn't seen one before. Yeah. And everyone, you know, lo I always get lots of uh, opinions back saying, well, what's better, Rat Rig or Voron? Why don't you build a Voron? Why, why can't you tell it? I'm like, well, look, I'm happy to build one, but there's no, there's not a company. It's not a company. Yeah. So, you know, and I spoke to, I think it's Steve there, and he was like, well, it's not a company. So to build one, it's kind of like a, you know, if you want to do it, do it. But, you know that's not that's yeah. not the aim of, of what no, I'm no, to and, and I have to admit I, I I I agree. Like so, we've got the we've got the blue rolls one, and the kit. Uh, to, to be fair, the kit is pretty good. Like genuinely, yeah. it, it, it's it's pretty good. Um, but sort of the, the 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 reality is that yes, the kit is good, but it's not. It's not like buying the stuff from Rat Rig. Do you know? Like, it's not like there's. I, I've got. I've in theory, I've got a mean well power supply. So at the very least, I have a power supply with a mean well sticker on it. And there's absolutely nothing that I can do specifically that can verify. They kept saying that they had Mitsumi extrusions, and I was like, for the price that you're paying, that's literally not possible. No. You do fifteen hundred pounds just an extrusion. Yep. If you were buying yep. actual graded Mitsumi rails, uh, yep. Mitsumi extrusions, and it, then it's it was. Funny. You know, it's funny because I saw stuff like that on the Rat Rig site, and they said, "Are these, um, are these, like, genuine rails?" And it's like, "What do you mean genuine? Are you talking about branded?" And it's kind of yeah. like you know, that, the thing is, it works. It works really well, and uh, you know, the V Minions an awesome printer as well. And they, they keep coming out with these things, you know, and I know there's been a lot of talk about like an IDEX style printer. Um, yeah. There was a Delta talk as well at one point, you know. Um, and again, I'm not super, super close to it right now because I've got like a million other things going on. But, yeah. um, you know, it was nice of them to say, you know, to be included in that. Yeah, it's coming out to you. Don't worry. And I'm like, oh, OK. You know, it's sort of like a but my plan is to go out to Portugal and, and go out and see their workshop and see what the guys are really about. And, um, oh, okay. you know. It's that that's that's a trip that I want to try and get. We've been talking about it for a while, so I'd like to go out there and do some stuff with it. And uh, you know, part of what I'm looking to try and do um, is basically travel a bit more. So you know, maybe out to China at some point. Um, you know, just just go and visit some of these places and see what these people yeah. are up to. And you know, maybe sort of humanize 3D printing to a degree because there's a lot of kind of um, brands and names and stuff out there, but there's not actual humanization behind it. I get um, you mean, yeah. So, you know, I've had some real issues with Creality. I've made no bones about it. You know, Creality have been, you know, they're, they're on to you when they want something from you, but then they won't yeah. talk to you when they're not. And, you know, I, it really sucks. And you can't just have a conversation. Whereas, you know, we all know Spring from any cubic. You know, Spring's brilliant yeah. as, a, as a person. <laughs> He's probably my most trusted Chinese confidant that I know out here because yeah. she – she means well. She wants to talk to you. She wants to be part of the community. She wants to travel as well. You know, she wanted to come out to form next and stuff. So you may see her there. And um, you know, when you when you notice the difference between somebody like any cubic, which let's be fair, the Cobra is a blatant ripoff of a lot of Creality's kit. Um, you know, when you when you kind of stylize that in the end, you you kind of feel like, well, I want to, I want the support, but I also want to feel like I know the person. I don't just want to be talking to another. So, it it was an interesting point at one when we when we posted about this um one of the first comments we got back was oh great another chinese printer just what we need and i and i sort of i i, I tried to get past the initial ridiculousness of the comment because i'm i'm sure that's just a person that you know doesn't like chinese printers and that's fine but i i don't so for a start i imagine that there probably are some printers that are Sort of made in the USA or made in Britain or made in Portugal or whatever, but surely they have to understand that 90% of the parts that are being made that go into that machine 
that they come from Chinese factories, right? That they may not yeah. be assembled, they may not be quality controlled by Chinese entities, but they, they, they have to understand that, right? They can't genuinely think that, that like, you know, that, that their machine is actually all made... 100% USA. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Like, I'm just not... I just, I, I'm really struggling to sort of... Uh, and I, sort of, I saw the comment and I was like, I mean... It's a lot of levels of ignorance within the comment, but at the same time, it's, it's sort of like it's it's there is an, an alternative to that. Not to mention the fact that the Chinese and Creality, not not in isolation, but but the Chinese companies are the reason why three D printing is what it is, because three yeah. D printing's been around since the sixties, and the only reason why it wasn't in your house was because everything was being made by one company, and the yeah. second that patent expired. Now we have, what, this is now 10 years maybe after the patents expired and we now have resin 3D printing in our homes. I mean, admittedly, with all sorts of horrendous toxic gases coming out of it, it's not really the point. <laughs> like, it's, like, it is still, like it is still, you know, they democratised it, right? It is, it is the access to the end of three. All right. I think we'll all agree that the Ender 3 is not a perfect machine by any standard. But at the same time, you cannot deny its place in, in, in history of 3D printing, right? Mm -hmm. Why do I recognize Sam's name? Well, he's had it's, it for a while. There's a lot of people called Sam. <laughs> there are a lot of people called Sam, to be fair. But this particular... You've probably met one before. Sam. He's <laughs> the real Sam. Out, let me just point out. It's <clears> the real, the real one. It's the real that's, Sam Prentice. You may difference. have met that's... some other Slim Shadies. But this Absolutely. is the real one. Exactly. I don't know because right. I know someone called Sam, and he's much older than you, so surely he's the original. Well, well you they... say that, but I've got the copyright. <laughs> uh -huh. He filed the paperwork for it, <laughs> and yeah. it's not what you—it's not what you but... know. It's what you can prove in court. And well, <laughs> he, could have and he could have grandfather rights over his name. <laughs> <laughs> it was my dad's name and my granddaddy's name before that. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, look, I, 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 we've had our issues with, with Creality to the point as to which we've now refused to uh, uh, we've, we've refused to do their machines. So they basically, the, the document they sent over to us when they wanted us to review the CR10 smart. Oh, thank God we've lost him. That's, no, creality, ha that's creality hacking in right now. Yeah. They, they do not want to be bad mouthed by anybody. Yeah. They are everywhere. YouTube. Yeah. Tw TikTok. Yeah. Tweet top. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. He's back. He's back. Am I He's back? back? Yeah. There we go. That was annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, it's uh, there. There isn't a channel on the planet with that would have signed the agreement that Creality sent over to us. Full editorial rights. Uh, they wanted us to write a script, which we had to, which we had to give to them. That they had to pre-approve before we could even film which, anything. Just to be clear, we have never done. Wow. Oh, who's got echo? Somebody's you, me, hey. yeah, yeah. Sounds like I don't you. think it can be me. I've got the I've got the Lavelier mic on. Check, check. There we go. All right, try again. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see. So um, Martin's just said about uh, any Cubics Instagram and also their Facebook. I think they posted about the uh, the Amazon oh, the pages um, thing and like. There's better things to squabble over. Do you know what I mean? If they thought it was a good idea, then the people are just going to copy stuff like that. Of course they are. It's got a different name on it, for Christ's sake. You know, it's <laughs> it's, it's bizarre. But that is what um, <coughs> uh, the uh, scanning company got done for, wasn't it? Um, Creality yeah. were basically copying copying their videos and yeah. essentially copying exactly word for word exactly what they were I saying. Yeah. Well, so, we've, so that, we've never <laughs> written a script for anyone. We weren't about to start with them. Which is pretty self-evident if you watch any of our videos. If I ever we had to film, film today, because I've no today, idea what to say. I mean, if you were today, we had to film a thirty-second video, just uh, for a sponsor video, thirty-second video. It took him about fifteen attempts. It was thirty seconds. <laughs> I was getting, I was getting so angry. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I've, I've, worked, I've worked with some people that want they want to see the video before I put it out, and I'm like, okay, but I'm not changing it, so it is what it is. Um, I've been sent an artillery, for example, um, and they've asked me to put you know to send them the video before I put it out, and I've not recorded the video yet. And it was the same, I think it's the same printer that uh, Tripod and I did 
oh. the unboxing for before I went out yeah. to Merv, uh while I was in the US and stuff. So, you know, you've seen the unboxing and it's going to be a case. In fact, it's the one that Joel said, the guy on Twitter, on I know, TikTok said that it caught fire and there was a whole spurious thing about how that happened and parts have been replaced and it's all sorted now. But you never see the back end of that. You never see. And this is how they resolved it. You just yeah. kind of get that snapshot of this is bad, this is bad, and it's quite damaging to businesses. And I'm not saying artillery or creality or any of these kind of companies are good, you know, practicing good business practices. I'm sure most of them aren't. Um, but, you know, it just goes to show it's, uh, again, you know, people reach out and say, well, shall I buy a any cubic or shall I buy a rat rig? And I'm going, well, depends how competent you are in yeah. your, everything you do in your life because i can't yeah. make a decision for you if you think actually yeah i just want to put a couple of screws in and you know hope for the best you know um what's it say plug and pray um if you want to build something and you know the v minion that i did i never tuned it because it comes out with perfect prints so however i built that i don't want to touch it and mess around with it because i just don't want to all of a sudden have crap prints out of it so yeah you know it's, i mean it's difficult isn't it because so I, I do i feel like the prusa i feel like the prusa mark three and again just because it has its place in in sort of 3d printing history i suppose um i feel like they found a happy medium which is that you do build the machine yourself you learn a lot about it while you're building it but you're not really doing anything important right you're not crimping wires you're not cutting things down to make them the right size you're plugging things in and then you're just zip tying it up and making sure that it sort of looks half neat and tidy when you're finished it's a very solid build guide you know that it's got a lot of support the community is very very uh passionate about the products so both me and matt have found out to our detriment um <laughs> every time you every time you besmirch the name of yosef it's uh it's it's uh, the uh you know scientology starts coming after you but um but you know it's it, it, it's it's sort of it goes back to that should you be should we be working towards maybe something like the bamboo labs where you're supposed to get it out the box and with no experience with nothing you can you can make it do exactly what it's supposed to do or should you should you build it yourself so that you know everything about it because if you took that approach with anything else You'd consider it garbage. Like if I told you, oh, well, I can give you an oven or you can build your own oven and then you'll know how ovens work. And you're like, mate, I've got like Netflix documentaries to get through and stuff. Like I haven't got time for making ovens. <laughs> like we put 14 <laughs> hours into building the Voron. And really? we're at like seven now, is it, Mike? For the seven, eight. seven or eight for the, for the V-Core. And we're just about to put boards on and everything else. Now, admittedly, I had to rebuild like six parts of that because I inadvertently did them not exactly as they were described in the instructions. But you've got to assume that the person who's building it is at least somewhat of a moron, which I am. So, <laughs> so, so that really comes down to it. ability, doesn't it? it? It depends whether or not it, it, all these things, you know, I use two Prusas and I, I love them, the Mark III Prusas are great. They're a great printer. And I use them for a lot of engineering stuff like building gears, making stuff that I want just to be done, especially yeah. if I'm using Polymaker filament. Here's a plug. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, like, if I'm if I'm using an expensive filament and it's just not a prototype, then I don't really care. In the background here, they're all any cubic printers in the garage uh, or the garage, depending on what side of the uh, pond you're on, uh, will very much depend on... Um, there he is. Yeah, it all depends. It will, it will all depend on what you're trying to print and what you're trying to do. So there he is. Hello, Tim. Are you hey, on, there you go. Go. down on the second row? I couldn't... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that you joined. <laughs> That's all right. I just got home. I was a bit late. Sorry about that. That's okay. Did you finally finish it, figure out Greenwich Mean Time? And uh... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I just had like a brain fart, and I thought GMT. I thought Gross Mountain Time or something. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, now I know better. So there we go. We're yeah. all learning. Every day's a school day. Every so, day, um, exactly. Every day. So just by ways of an update, I haven't used the auto refill section of this yet because I need to test that um, in an environment where it's not going to spill everywhere and I, I don't have a situation on my hands. Um, but at the moment, we're just putting on, I've put on the frozen print test to just do the exposure test. I went with, they gave me a profile that was in, um, that was in their, that is in Vlare Slicer. 
V L A R E. Flare slicer is not a slicer I have used before. I would be lying if I didn't say it looked exactly like Batman's version of Cheaty Box because yeah. it's just dark. <laughs> right. It seems like a dark version of the other one. Yeah. So Flare has got a really smug page where they're like all the features you want for free. Um, including automatic supports, error detection, repair, hollowing, etching text, cutting, and many more. So it I'll does back, feel I'll like a bit of a... Hi, Sam. It does feel like a bit of a... Um, we're better than Cheetah Box kind of page. Uh, <laughs> possibly their ported version of Cheetah. So to be fair, I think Flare Slicer has been around for a while. Hmm. I don't think yeah. it's these... I, I, think think it's been, these guys I think there's been a few them. updates on it from yeah. looking at it last night um but their list of printers when i went on to have a quick look doesn't actually have a specific name for the printers yeah kind of so unless you import a profile all the profiles that are in there are just a screen size yeah and a resolution hmm. So, like, you can you can do the settings for a 10.1 inch 4K printer, and it will make those settings, but it won't do like a Mono X setting or a Frozen Mighty setting or something like that. It just literally is just it's just that. So, um, so they gave me a profile which I have loaded in. That was very easy. Uh, the if I look at the slice settings, so two base layers with a burn-in time of thirty-five seconds, and then three-second exposure time for regular resin. Now I will defer to the resin printing god in this instance because I don't know whether or not when you're dealing with an eight K machine, does that mean your cure time goes up? Or your cure time goes down because three no. seconds feels like a lot for normal resin <clears throat> yeah so uh, it's going to depend on the resin that you're using not so much the machine well 13 minutes in and it has just finished i didn't even realize because 30, 13 minutes yeah. for, a, for a for a print test is not terrible i suppose but at the same time it's not quick hmm. no that's pretty good but so lychee is good fist. for that so that that might actually be a jab at lychee not uh oh you reckon mm -hmm. what because lychee originally cat went so i remember when cheetah box came out and said they were doing the pro i remember yep. there were a couple of slices who were like mm, we won't do a pro version because we're free and then lychee like two <laughs> weeks later went oh yeah actually we've just figured out that if we do charge for it we get money so yeah, uh, so we're yeah. gonna do that. <laughs> and and then <laughs> not not only do they have a pro version, they also have like a plus version too. Oh so right, it's even a higher tier. So I'll tell you the only thing that annoys me about Chi Two Box Pro because I don't begrudge somebody mm -hmm. making money out of software that they've designed. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that the M three Max, um, the M three Max's plugin profile was yeah. on the free version before it was on the pro version. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And I was like, why? Why would you do that? <laughs> so unnecessary. So I am now going to very gently look underneath this bill plate and see whether or not <gasps> there's a print on there. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, there's a print on there. learned how to print. Woohoo. All right. Yeah, Nick Sweeney. Good I job, can, little buddy. My name and Sam isn't here anymore. Oh, Sam's back, isn't he? <laughs> no, I right. said I can change my name since Sam isn't there. <laughs> the fake Sam Prentice. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's a three-second it's a three-second per layer time, so I'm expecting this to be a little bit. Um... And this is how James uh, uses resin printing when he's. Not so what what calibration file are they using an xp uh well their it? one is just a their one is just a square that's got four squares on it oh, but okay. the reason why i didn't want to use it was because um the, the the squares are actually quite tall in fact hold on i'll just show you 
Yeah, I'll bring the FTL file into Blair and, and share the screen. It looks kind of like the Frozen one I used. Well, the, the one that I've used is a Frozen one. Oh, you set up that. I just, that figured, I just figured it's a good print test, and I've used it before, so I'll use that. But yeah. um, but the one that it came with would have taken longer, I would debate, because it feels like it's... Um, it's right, here we go. I mean, it's a really basic print test. So where are we? Share. Okay. Screen. Blair. So here we go. So this is Batman Slicer. <laughs> and that's their print test. Oh, okay. okay. So like that's a, a very, few layers. Basic test. It's a very, very basic. It's literally very does this work or does this not work? It's not a. Uh, yeah. You can so how uh, how uh, detailed it is. Yeah. So what I wanted. So what obviously what I used was the was the frozen test. Yeah. And for no other reason than the height difference means that this frozen test prints in like 13 minutes. Yeah. And this test would probably take like a good half hour because what? of how tall it is. Like, I mean, the layout of all of this, I mean, let's be fair, it's very cheaty. It's all cheaty. Like, that mm. feels... It's it like uh, the first Corality uh, slicer. Looks more yeah. like an FDM. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Paul, it does look quite a lot. Of, it looks a lot um, like... Uh, like yeah, a retraction yeah. tower test than it does mm -hmm. <laughs> than it does a resin printer test, but yeah. Yep. So anyway, so that's the that's the slicer. So when you go into uh, when you go into slice settings, here you can see I've got the Jace, but if you wanted to set up a new machine, then the new machines, unless someone gives you a profile, then the only way you can set the machine is by picking from these options. And then you would be able to go in and change build platform sizes and decide whether or not it's got anti-aliasing and all that stuff. Hmm. Very interesting. I also don't think there is a way to turn this off of like night mode. Oh, we can turn shadows on or off. I don't know what reconstruction means. I don't know what that means either. So there's no way to make it a different color. So if you are colorblind, then this is probably not the program for you. Like, like oh, dear, well, can't see orange. So if you're a deer, you can't really this. Yeah. Pardon? Not if your colorblindness is orange. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So let's get this off. And I will very quickly, so talk amongst yourselves, and I will uh, oh, yeah, I will yeah. go and wash this, and then I shall return. So one moment, callers. Callers. We're, we're sorry. The person you were trying to reach is on <laughs> oh, this, this still seems really weird doing live streams in my living room. <laughs> <sighs> why, why do you have your stuff moved to the living room? I moved house, and oh. Oh. there's so much work that needs to go into my garage before I can use it. I've got to have a new roof, new door, mm. um, electrics, you know, just the three important bits. It, it doesn't look right without little Mike behind you, though. No, but I have got on my bookcase now, I have got my um, Harry Potter book knock. I have got it lit up. I'd love to be out in my garage space, but it's not insulated for the winter, so. Well, that's what I've got to do when I do it. I need to insulate it and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I can't do any wood burning in here on the, with the lasers. I can. I've got to set up a ventilation system yet, so. Are you still working on the boring build, are you, Tim? Yeah, yeah, it's... Um, it, it's coming along pretty good right now. It's uh, which one is it here? This one here. So it's it's coming along. It's actually starting to look like a printer. So um, I think I think tonight. I think the next one of the next steps tonight is to start um, with the stealth burner. So yeah. 
Right. So, okay, so straight out of the gate, this is overexposed. So three seconds on this is too long. But too let's just see if I can. You got to blow yourself up. <laughs> no. Yeah, go bigger. Go bigger. There we go. All right, bring, bring yourself big on the screen. There we go. There we go. Right, so you cannot see through the holes. Hold on. So definitely, it is definitely overexposed. But all, right, so, so all the, the text, there we go. Look at that. All the text is there. All the cross hatch is there. You can't really see the, so these lines either side should be separate, right? Yes. And they're not at the moment. So, okay. um, so, so that's overexposed. I'd probably bring it down to what? What do you reckon? 2.5? 2.2? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, so I would go 2.2. That's, 2. that's usually my go-to yeah. for starting on any printer. So there is a teeny bit of it. I don't know if you can see that in the light. Yep. A little bit of texture from the build plate, but oh, you yeah. can't feel it. So it's not like it's not it's not a brutal like horrible horrible texture that you'd get on that. Obviously, I haven't seen Vlair Slicer with. Um, let's pull that back out. I haven't seen Vlair, what Vlair Slicer does with support settings. So I don't know whether or not the support settings in Flare are any good or whether they're like Cheetu, whether they're like Lychee, whether they're like a different program. But I'm not being funny. We took it out of the box. Out of two boxes. On. We threw two, some resin in. It works. That's a, that's a working printer. So the things to test mm -hmm. next are obviously to see whether or not the auto refill works. So, let's take this off. And let's pull this out. And now we have a, a fun moment where I figure out whether or not I've got enough resin in here. Yeah, I've probably got just enough. Now, can you set at what level the auto refill kicks in? Well, I don't think so, no. What you can do, so there's a toggle on the machine here. So right now it's off. You can toggle it up and you man and you are manually pouring it in. So you oh, could okay. top it up more than you wanted to, in theory. Mm. Like if you were trying to drain the bottle, I guess. Yep. Um but the other side is just it just says auto. So I don't know. Mm. So we'll we'll pop that in there. So let's see what happens. Oh, it works. It's working. It. Oh, yeah, you can see it there. So there's obviously a... It is a working. Moisture. There's obviously a detector of some sort to shut it off. Yeah, it so there's down. a little wire here. So this what this top wire on this goes over to the... That's the VAT sensor. Oh, okay. Let me refocus that. There we go. That's better. Right. So the little sensor here goes to the VAT sensor. And then this here is the ambient sensor that mm. detects the, the temperature there. It does say here that you can set. Oh, right. The bottom setting is OK. So the bottom setting is the. The bottom setting is is. Yeah, there we go. We can hear a fan then kick in. in. Oh, that goes up and down. Okay. So then the bottom one is setting the temperature and the other one is the readout. Hmm. So I would say put them, put them both at 30 degrees. Put them both at 30. Yeah. See how it does. Uh, somebody's asking the retail price on this. Asking the what? Price. Retail, retail price. price. So I'm going to be honest. I don't know the retail price. I only currently have the early bird price for Kickstarter. So just the machine. No, uh, no carbon filter and no auto refill. 
just the machine is 459 US dollars out the gate huh. on the Kickstarter. So that is a pretty aggressive price. That's, it is. Uh, that, that's going right for the Yellow Goose Saturn. Yep. Nice range. <clears throat> um, so I'm just trying. Oh, so this gets warm. <clears throat> yes. And then, and then this here is the actual heater fan. Fair enough. Pop that down. So there's not a lot of resin in that little tank bit, so I don't know how much uh, how that's going to do. But um, but I mean that. What else can you say? That printed right out the box. I didn't touch the build plate. Build plate is is leveled, I guess, from the factory. Um, I didn't set the Z offset. That was also set from the factory. Yeah. So. Nonstick is saying 550, 600 for the Saturn II. So oh. I'm guessing that one fully loaded, let's say it's even $100 more. You get a lot more options than any other printer on the market right now. 8K, 10.1 yeah. inch, auto refill, active carbon filter, Wi Fi printing, not a Cheeto board for those people who are bothered by that. It's got active heating for both the VAT and the build chamber. Oh. Like, I'm not being but, funny. Even, but if if you could... you took, even if you took the only other properly 8K printer I can think of, which is the mighty, the mighty 8K, the mighty 8K is what 950 bucks. Well, yeah, look yeah, at 9, the 950, um, I think, isn't well, it? Well, James, the iPhone giant, you know, the 8K. Yes, is two thousand dollars, isn't it, with a heated chamber? Right. Mm. That yeah, that's only so, got a heated. That that's only yeah. got a heated chamber, not a and heated that, vat. Yeah, and that you could get four of them for the yeah. price of one of them. Wow. Yeah, yeah well the that's... mega eight K non stick is a different animal, right? Because for a start that's a fifteen inch, so it's not a fifteen fifteen inch or th no. But fifteen point six, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So it's a bigger it's a bigger printer for a start. However, it doesn't have auto <laughs> refill, it doesn't have active heating. It doesn't have a carbon filter in it. Nope. Um, you know, I mean, you get a lot of printer for that money. Yeah. So what I will do actually is I will just check what output Vlair Slicer did in the end. So it's a VLR file. So that is going to be a proprietary file type to Vlair Slicer. So yep. it's not like um, it's not like. Like, so I know you can you can get a Cheeto box file type out of other slicers, right? You can get CTBB files out of out of other slicers. Obviously, you can't you can't do that with Blair. When I saved that, it didn't give me an option on the file type. It just said to me, like on the website, it says it does. But I don't know if that's with okay, the new update. Let me just see if it if it'll output different. It might just be because that's what. Oh, okay. Mm, yeah. So it'll output a, a Vlare, a Zip, or an OSF. Yeah. Okay. So look, I mean, the, the reality is, is if the supports in this are garbage, then we can do what me and Matt do quite a lot, which is <laughs> do all of your supports in G2, export it all as an STL file, and then stick it into the slicing you need to to be able to get the uh, to be able to get the output type that you need. It's actually exactly what I had to do to get the... So when we had the Opus, or when we've got the Opus, we're still waiting on to do the review on that. Um, the Opus, I was put... So to use third-party resins, I was doing I was doing all my supports in Cheeto Box, exporting it, and then using their £150 software to slice it. Which I was really happy about, because I had to pay for the software as well. On a machine that I don't actually own, <laughs> which was a real, a real twist of the knife at the end of it. That was a real, that was a real fun one for me. But um, you can tell how much we love that machine, going by how long we've had it and how long the reviews taken. We've had it like, oh god, we must have had that three months now. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Look, I've got it working. Like it does print, it does print regular resins. But what it really, when if you want it to print well and you want it to print reliably. You just have to use theirs, and I yeah. don't like mm. that. Yeah, because it's sixty-five pounds a liter, 
and they're specialist resins. They're like dental resin or they're flexible or they're ABS like ABS. or whatever. They don't even have like a regular draft resin that you can use for that right. machine. Like it's super annoying. But anyway, that's not this printer. So uh, <laughs> so that does now read out that it is heated. I'll go back here. That now reads out that it is heated. Oh, it is warm in there. Hmm. Oh, that's toasty. I like that. Okay, fine. And then it looks to me that this is also, um, so you can turn the auto feed off if you want to. So the only thing I would say, isn't it on the M3 Max that you get a, you get an auto refill? And does it, does it drain as, it doesn't drain as well, does it? No, it does not. No. Okay. Fair enough. So this obviously doesn't drain either. It's just a night. Oh, bye. <laughs> bye, Rob. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. So, look, I mean, that works. That's a working printer. Works straight out of the gate. I would, again, I would challenge their settings a little bit. I think three seconds is probably a bit, um, probably a bit harsh. But, I mean, that's, that's still one of the clearer, like, I can completely read that text. That text it, I can read and I can rub it and it doesn't come off. Yeah. So when I printed this with, so the only thing I can probably compare it to is the 4K iPhone. If you rubbed the text, the letters, then they came off. Huh. Like you could literally rub them off, and the same with there's like there's like a there's like a crosshatch texture on each of the corners, and um, and you could rub if you rubbed that hard, then the resin actually came away. A pretty good prints from 40 percent cheaper than the max m3 yeah, yeah so I, I don't suppose you'd put it up against the max though would you you put it up against the, the plus the m3 plus because the max is a 13 inch machine this is only 10.1 so you'd put it up against the m3 plus the m3 plus is oh, i'll have to look it up yep yeah m3 plus i think is an 8.9 yeah, only a 6k. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, 6k because uh, yeah. the max is a 7k, isn't it? Right, yep. all right. So, the monos, the megas, why can't I find them on any cubics website? Oh, there we go. The M3 Max, the M3 Max, but right, okay, so. If you bought the M3 Plus, the M3 Plus is currently 669 US dollars. So already more, more expensive than this. It mm. does have the auto refill. If you, want the, if you want the air purifier as well, it goes up to 692 US dollars, but it does not have a heater in it. And it's 9.25 inches, so it's smaller, and it's only 6K, and this is 8. And it's cheaper. <laughs> Like, I seen someone posted fifth. No, fifteen is. He was talking about the mega. Uh, he was talking about the mega eight K for that. Um, the max is obviously seven K. Thirteen one. But it's thirteen point one. Yeah, yeah. So that is a bigger machine. But again, still doesn't have a vat heat. Still doesn't have a heater. Doesn't heat the vat. Doesn't heat the building closure. Like ticking a lot of boxes. This is an aggressive move out of the gate. Like. Is it ever? To have, to have brought that to, to well, I, again, they haven't yet because it's a Kickstarter, but to bring something like that to market. So the guys who designed this at Jash NC, which I want to be clear, no one asked me whether or not that was a cool name or not. I think had they have done, we might have changed it before we wrote the logo, but whatever. Um, so so they are ex Cheetu Box engineers. So they, they used to work at Cheetu. They have now gone off on their own. Hence why they have their own main board, their own screens, all of that stuff. Um, and they've clearly learned a lot from this. So that will explain Batman mode on their slicer then. That could very <laughs> well do, yeah. <laughs> the Dark oh, the dark Knight Rises! Yes. Ooh. Yes, they should have called it that. This should have been the Batman machine. I'm already annoyed. Right. <laughs> 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 so look i mean we're going to do some more testing on this um as we go through we'll do some tiktok videos and things like that um 
obviously yeah. so this is literally the first of these machines that has gone out nobody else has these yet so keep an eye out because there will be other youtubers that will more than likely get these machines we will have to get matt one otherwise we're not allowed to sell printers so like <laughs> we're not allowed to do one if you say send one to matthew there's the rules so uh so we're gonna we'll have a chat with uh, the guys over at just to see whether or not we can we can sort of sort out some other machines to start going out as well so you can get some other opinions um but i mean right out of the gate this is this is nice i um, this is an engineering sample so this isn't the final thing um but uh but at the same time like it's doing it like it's doing it for me i'm i'm well happy with with how this is uh with how this is performing and everything a couple of little bits like i'm not I'm still not loving the hinges on the door. Like, well, that, but that could change, couldn't it? That could change. Well, so I feel like I'd have liked to gas strut. Um, I feel like I'd have liked Some, it to something have, to hold uh, it, like at this. Yeah, so you yeah. could have had, you could have had it up like that, yeah. rather than having to put it all the way back. Because I feel like there's only going to be a couple of times that you can drop that before it cracks the hinges. Yeah, all the plastic. Um, yeah. They could as well have literally had it where they didn't have any hinges there and they just had a handle and you just took it off the front, which if you've got these set up in a farm, that would have been that would have been ideal for me because you Well that's have on the M3 Max, isn't it? Close to each other. Yeah, it's just the yeah. back part comes um, on, then in the front just comes on. I don't know what companies' obsessions are with putting USB ports on the sides of machines. Yeah. Put them on the front. What is wrong with you? Why does it have to be there? Put it on the front because that's where the, I am. I'm at the front. and the power button as well at the front. The power yeah. button at the back, right? Yeah. So, um, so yeah. that's a little irritating because again, if you've got these stacked next to each other and you want to like go around, you've got to reach, you've got to give it a reach around yeah. to be able to to be able to turn the thing on or off. You could debate that because this has got Wi-Fi and you could just connect to it directly from the slicer. I guess you don't need to have the USB key in there. Yeah. But yeah. So I would I would have saved myself the hassle of creating a fail point there and I'd have just had this removable. Um so that then you've not got to worry about stressing it or anything else and you can just take that off and put it down somewhere. Um but other than that, like they're minor things and they're like me, just literally looking for things to pick at. It's good. I like it. A lot of bells and whistles for the price point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Matt, I was saying it gave me real sort of Nova 3D vibes when I got it out of the box. <laughs> I heard, yeah. Got that sort of like, you know, got that white on white on orangey yellow. Sort of quite like that. Because, I, I mean, I really like the Nova 3D machines. So They are very good. I kind of like it at the back so you don't miss hit it. Oh, it's quite a, to be fair, it's quite a recessed button. Like you wouldn't just accidentally brush against it. It's not a switch. It is like a press button. But anyway, we'll leave it there. We'll put some more prints on this and we will, uh, we'll carry on doing some tests. We'll get some, uh, we'll get some stuff out on TikTok soon as well. If you guys are interested in following the progress, then take a look in the video description. There's a link to the Discord. There's a link to their website, and you can sign up to their newsletter. And there's a link to their Facebook page, where they are posting Facebooky things and various updates. Um, we are going to start getting some more detailed models to start throwing on this and seeing what it can do. Um, I have a list of stuff that I want to do on this for our Back to the Future train because there's some stuff that my other machines are too small for, and this is the perfect level of quality to be able to do that. So I'm well happy. So other than that, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Thank you to Tim, Matt, and Carl, and thank you to Mike, who, well, he's here, so that's nice. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody who watched. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Keep an eye on the channel. Speak to you soon. Have a good one. Bye Cheers, bye. guys. Bye.